So we have a huge moment here within this video. The Zulu are potentially going to get entirely like sanctioned like it's kind of like a real world scenario first of all they're gonna get embargoed uh and in this world there's no city state so they would have no one to trade with no economic resource at all plus we also have the standing army tax that might also get enacted obviously you know big people like mongolia maybe the huns the zulu are gonna try to uh vote nay against that proposal but this could be a huge impact on this world so we had a really exciting episode in that last one. Uh, we we had like, what was that? It was about five cities, I think, that exchanged hands into other territories. A lot of border cleaning up as well. Uh, China, more than likely, is... Uh, going to get kicked out of Asia, I think, depending on how much uh, Indian support comes from the West. Uh, Rome and Germany made peace. Looks like for now Berlin is safe, but I don't know for how long because we also have the Huns slowly approaching Warsaw from the East, which would be a, a monumental moment for Attila, uh, kind of showing off, his, his kind of flexing his muscles, showing that he is he's a, world he's a world power now. He would be a world power by then because he's, once again, Europe is extremely vulnerable extremely vulnerable and that's kind of the way it is in this map because um well because th they they don't have much room now i plan on i maybe <laughs> probably shouldn't say anything but uh i guess a little sneak peek in, into uh my idea for the next one is, is is i'm gonna buff europe i i promise europe is about to be buffed uh and, and i don't want to say anything else than that uh, so all you know right now is that Europe is going to be in the next one, uh, and, and they're going to be buffed. That's all I'm going to say, but uh, I, I think I have a very, very good... I, I think I, I'm, I'm really excited for uh, the next AI-only battle. I, I'm extremely excited, but that's all I want to say for that. Um, so Korea, again, still isn't much of a military, still hasn't built any spaceship parts up. I believe, now I believe the AI starts to recognize when spaceship parts begin to be built by other AIs. I, I think the AI recognizes that, and, and I, I'm not sure if that's going to influence him enough, Genghis Khan enough, but right now I, I know people are getting frustrated with Genghis. They're like, dude, just go to war! And I get that. I get that feeling. I'm the same way. But he's got. We, we, we're not waiting for anything. It's okay. You know, there's no rush. Just, just you know, don't push him too much. He's he's getting more and more powerful as as he takes over more and more Chinese cities. Uh, they haven't they haven't moved they haven't approached Warsaw too much, but Warsaw is completely undefended here. Besides this Polish cannon, looks like they actually might be going up north. They better go after that capital. Although this is a pretty nicely uh, populated city as well. I mean, no rush. Don't rush. Don't rush Genghis. All right. Don't rush him. He's okay. Honestly, here's the thing, because. You're, you know, someone's argument could be, well, you know, if Genghis Khan doesn't go to war right now, then that's going to give more of an opportunity for Korea to, to build up units. Honestly, Korea's not building units. Korea is focusing on science. Korea is focusing on production of spaceship parts. They don't have time to build units. And, and the longer we wait, the longer Genghis Khan waits, the better, because Genghis Khan is not that far behind in technology. Obviously, I don't think he's going to be able to compete against Korean mobile SAMs, as we don't see many mobile SAMs. We do see one Mo uh, Mongolian rocket artillery, which is a start, but the longer uh, Mongolia and Korea wait and are at peace, the more time we possibly have for uh, for, for maybe the 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 mongolian empire catching up at least technological technology wise to the koreans so maybe you know by the time genghis go, does go to war with korea he's gonna have his own helicopter helicopter gunships and he's gonna have like 12 of them or something like that so uh so yeah so anyways we've got india and china at war or i'm sorry at peace i'm sorry i'm peace peace peace, peace. uh indonesia has decided to peace out as well now did china give up anything in that peace deal doesn't look like it do they give up any colonies? They didn't. Ah, that's too bad. That is too bad. Indonesia, you could have taken so much more, honestly, buddy. A little bit, slightly, heavily disappointed in you. Another Persian settler? Oh, no, this is a Siamese settler. Oh, he's going to stay alive. He is going to stay alive. Here goes Mongolia, and Mongolia is, yeah, Mongolia is the only one that, that has the opportunity of taking out this final Chinese city. That's going to be so rough, though. So rough. Especially with these uh, these advanced Chinese units stationed in here. Uh, yeah, there's no way. Honestly, I hope he doesn't do it. I hope he pieces out. Just because this is only just this is only ruining his military more and more. Although, he's got a lot back here. I don't think we could say... I don't think we can just say it's ruining his military. But it is causing an impact. 
Yeah, it is causing an impact. So yeah, the Huns might have lost the city, but they've gained a much, much better one. Actually, not the best, but um, I guess you could argue that Attila hasn't solidified his position as a world power until he gets another city, because he did lose a city in in kind of Western India to the Persians. I'm not sure if that was that great of a city, because I, I think it was puppeted. Uh, it was puppeted, I believe, so I don't think it was really causing them that much. It might have even helped them in terms of science output, since their science limit is, isn't as high anymore. A lot of peace going on now. We're at, a, we're at a brief moment of peace again. It's like these huge explosions of peace and then, oh, the Celts are going to war. Wait, no, that's Spain declaring war on the Celts. Uh, Spain, you have nothing. You have no cities, dude. You have like, you have like one Spanish Lancer that's trapped behind this Zulu city. That you were dumb enough to settle. That was that was honestly Isabella's plan the entire time. Was to settle here. <laughs> she knew the Zulu were going to go to war with her. And she was going to be like, hey, fuck you, Zulu. You can have this shit that has absolutely nothing but custom houses and uh, two iron. <laughs> so, all right, yeah, that's a big screw you moment. All right, well, let's see. Here's the big moment. Here is the huge United Nations policy here. Okay. Let's see what passes. Let's see what's not. Uh, we still have quite a bit before that turn processes, though, but we shall continue to see. Again, yeah, the Huns don't look like they're approaching Warsaw. Looks like they're more, yeah, looks like they're trying to take... Well, this, this is a big city to take, too, though. Some of these other, yeah, these Poland cities are pretty good. They're almost as good as Warsaw. Warsaw has 17 citizens, and I think it's going to uh, divide by two, divide in half, so it'll only be about eight, maybe. Yeah, I think it goes to eight. I think it rounds down if it's a number like this. If it's an uh, it's an uneven number, an odd number. Again with the Zulu piece, which might come back to bite them in the ass here. Uh, in terms of score, we've got Shaka at 1623, Genghis Khan at 1552, uh, and then leading up third place, we've got India at 885. Good for them. Korea right behind them uh, at 867, and Haran al-Rashid 865. Attila now in sixth place at 794. Surprisingly enough, Japan at 618. Uh, there are a couple civs that I'm really underrating. Like, obviously, they have probably no chance at a victory here, but I'm underrating Japan. Their sheer uh, religious, their, their sheer, like, spread of their religion has been amazing. Incredible. Oh, and we might see Mongolia and California. Yes, that's my hometown, baby. Mongolia and California. I, I love, uh, I've tried Mongolian food. I love it. I, I actually really, really like it. Um, and besides that, wait, whoa, Sydney Opera House by Korea. We actually saw that they were building that. Uh, and I don't know what else we were discussing, but we have a mass. I didn't realize the massive Zulu troops uh, within South America right now. Not so much. Well, it is in their homeland a bit, but there's more in South America than anything else. They're protecting their cities in a pretty smart way, though. I'm liking the way they're surrounding their cities. It's a pretty good idea. Uh, what else do we have? Let's, how, how are the Huns doing? Okay, so boom, that's another city that the, Pol the, the Polish are going to lose. They're going to keep their capital, which is significant. And I'm wondering, I want to see exactly what, what, the, what the cultural output is after Poland loses a few cities. So the Zulu have denounced Siam. The Zulu have also denounced Denmark. I don't see why people do that. That's just messed up. And why, why denouncing some of these civs? Again, in the last video, we saw Carthage take hold of Iberia, and uh, more and more of Europe is being under is is under attack. All right, so what happened here? People we like to visit. It's actually Genghis Khan at number one, Shaka at five, Haran al Rashid four. What is this exactly showing us? Oh, oh, influential. Wow, Genghis Khan is influential over eight already. That's really, really surprising. I believe there's only about 26 civs left in this game, something like 26. So 8 already is not bad, especially when Korea doesn't have any spaceship parts up. Alright, so here we go. Let's see exactly what got enacted and what didn't. So, uh, saying army tax was not passed and embargo was passed. Boom. So, uh, who voted yay against this? Obviously the standing army tax, that was probably a lot of people that voted against that. Just because a lot of people have a massive army. And even if someone, like the, like the Romans, the Romans, you know, more than likely, it was people like Rome who don't have a huge empire but have a big military to protect themselves. Uh, that, those are the, probably the people that were, de that were, you know, denouncing or voting nay against that proposal because uh, they probably don't have the economy to support 
anything anything more, any sort of extra penalty for their f- forces here. Someone like probably Babylon as well. They probably don't have the economy to support uh, more proposals, more sanctions against having a larger military. All right, well, uh, I, just, I just don't feel like it having any more of an impact than that. I'm glad that it didn't pass somewhat, so I'm just going to continue to embargo city-states. And uh, I, I, I see that there are people that really don't want me to have an impact. Uh, I, I don't think that choosing randomly is an impact, but um, well, whatever. I mean, it's fine. Let's just not, let's just not do anything. And, uh, and that's another thing. So as I said, Japan has their like weird advantage. Like even though they won't, might not win the game, they have an awesome religion, and they're they're much stronger than they look. Obviously, with their three cities. So is Persia, though. Because Persia is the only person that gets to vote. And they have a huge amount of votes compared to the rest of the world. They've got double the amount of votes. So Persia has a lot more power than uh, the surface because they simply get to vote. Did anyone get vote? No. Arabia did because Arabia's probably, yeah, Arabia's unique ability is trade routes. And they probably have a lot going to the Zulu. So, okay, Morocco, I get that as well. Everyone else did not like it. So we have Korea constructing the Hubble Space Telescope. Oh, that's a big one for Korea if he, if he builds that. If he, if he builds that, let's. I'm gonna keep it in a war. Actually, no. Let's move to the Huns. It's officially. Uh, I think the Huns now, since I, I can. I think it's safe to say the Huns are gonna take a few cities here. All right, Tilla's court. Bam. So yeah, the next big powerhouses. Uh, do we have one spy? Oh, that's too late for that. Okay. We should probably move one of these spies to India, since they are kind of the next. I think the next biggest. Yeah, I mean, India Gandhi is fourth place. Again, a, another big factor is when we see who exactly is going to construct Manhattan projects. Mongolia, please don't try this. You're not going to be able to do it, dude. You're just not going to be able to do it. The Ottomans in India are now friends. Whoa, interesting friendship there. Very interesting friendship. I like it. Does Will Mongolia sell, settle California? Or maybe Baja, California? They could be going for some... Uh, I don't think they're going to settle here, because usually the AI doesn't typically settle on top of luxuries, but we'll see. Oh, they're definitely going for the the, the Burying Crater, for sure. Two, I mean, not the greatest natural wonder, but uh, two extra gold and three science. It would be nice if you increased something like these natural wonders, I think, should get increased over time. I think something like, you know... Uh, I, I don't know. I just feel like they should, at least in science output or tourism, imagine that. Natural wonders should kind of uh, have an impact on tourism. That'd be really cool. Obviously, I'd love to visit something like the Grand Canyon or or uh, Krakatoa because I've learned about it. I, I've been taking a geology class, actually learning a lot about Krakatoa. Apparently, it's not a Krakatoa anymore. It's it's called something else because Krakatoa exploded. I'm actually not 100% on that. I wasn't paying attention like fully. I was kind of like sleeping and during that uh, process of geology, but I'm pretty sure Krakatoa just totally exploded. One of the just uh, dev- most devastating natural events in history uh, back in the 19th century, and I'm pretty sure it, it's a, a volcano has formed in its spot, but it's not called Krakatoa anymore. Not 100% on that, but I think that's that's the case. So I don't know if that's the case. I'm disappointed in Fraxis. Yeah, but yeah, no, I feel like the science output should kind of increase uh, for natural wonders, or at least it should cause tourism. Boom! Huns have grabbed another city, and I don't think that will be the last. They can grab a few more. Poland still has enough troops where I don't think they'd have to um, negotiate giving up more cities. Whoa, weird one. Indonesia declaring war on the Huns. I don't think the Ottomans are ballsy enough to join against the Huns, and I hope they don't, honestly. I like I like this kind of... Uh, I like the Huns. I, I do like the Huns. Surprisingly enough, even though the Chinese have lost so many cities, they still are very high in score. Really shocking here. Catherine at 520, Nebuchadnezzar at 497, the Ottomans at 495. China's been quiet. Uh, they are at a few wars, but no, no adjacent wars. I love when the AI does this. So funny. So maybe the Ottomans might be going after St. Petersburg. Look how massive St. Petersburg is. Wow. Napoleon's entered the modern era. A lot of modern era, era entering. Um, look how huge it is. 27 pop. I really hope that window pops up. I know there's no way I'd be able to wing it and just look around and find, oh yeah, we've got the Korean capital, 28 population. Another ideology chosen. Uh, I'm surprised that India doesn't have the the biggest uh, city. I know it probably will not be in Europe. 
very massive colony here. Oh, there it goes. Boom. India, Persia. India, Persia. Now, that was Persia declaring war on India. That's This scares me. This scares me because India has a big impact, and I kind of don't want Persia to get any stronger. So I don't know. That's just my choice. I probably shouldn't be that biased, but... Well, I mean, they have the technological advantage slightly here. Slightly. The Indian infantry units are going to be able to, you know, fight a little bit better against... Is Persia and Arabia? Yeah, they are. Persia and Arabia is still at war. I, f I completely forgot about that. That's probably why most of the Arabian troops are moving up north. Yeah, wow. Through the Persian Gulf, I believe. That's... Wow. That explains a lot here. Hmm. All right, well, India doesn't have much troops. They've got a lot of archaeologists. Uh, they're going to need to maneuver away. I'm sure their sights were probably set on Siam, but that ended up not happening. Oh, Denmark declared... Oh, shit. Okay, wait a second. That's India. That's Korea declaring war on both India and, uh, and the Huns. That's not the Mongolians. I thought one of those was going to be the Mongolians. All right, so lots of wars. Lots of wars. Also, let me check back on these, uh, this Siamese settler. No? Still haven't settled anywhere. Are you going for Hawaii? Siamese Hawaii. Where did they go? Oh, here he is. No, you're just going for the New Worlds. Or you might be going for Hawaii. I don't know. Mongolia still has not settled yet. Uh, we got Poland declaring war in Denmark. Oh, Shaka's completed the Apollo program, as well as, uh, uh, Poland's got their city back. Oh, okay. So boom, that's the third Apollo program. Now between Korea, Mongolia, and the Zulu. Again, I do need to look at cultural uh, influence here. I'm sorry, cultural, cultural stuff. Whoa, this is this is complicating some things. This is certainly complicating some things. Genghis Khan is constructing the Manhattan Project. That's big. Okay, so uh, Korea is at war with India and the Huns. Obviously, the ones with uh, the war against the Huns don't matter. And even with India, it doesn't matter. Although, wait a second, does Korea... No, Korea has nothing down here. Yeah, so the wars with Korea doesn't cause an impact. These are these are big wars. Denmark declaring war on, on Attila. That's kind of big, somewhat. Attila has lost a lot of troops, but actually, no, it probably won't. Yeah, no, the, there's no way. I don't think Denmark has open borders through any of these civs, so that's not that big of a deal. But India and Persia is a big deal. Okay, so we've got France choosing to order. A lot of the smaller civs finally choosing up their ideology. We also have, weirdly enough, Poland right afterwards declared war on uh, Harold. Don't know why there. That's, I don't think anything's going to come from that. All right, uh, all right, Hans. Well, just focus in and uh, continue to attack Warsaw. You want to have a major impact here, continue to attack Warsaw. Although, I completely forgot the Persians are still at war with Arabia and the Huns. And now they're at war with India. Ballsy move here. If they lose enough, then I think Babylon's going to join in and take the capital, the Persian capital, which would be really good for them. Very big populated city. A lot of population. Mecca's at 33 citizens. 33 population. And I thank you so much. Also, I thank you so much for the, uh, uh, for the kind souls that, that helps me figure out exactly how population is converted into realistic numbers. It's such a weird formula. Very, very strange formula, but... It's good to know. It, I didn't, it didn't make sense if uh, this was just like 1,000. And it was weird how it scaled because you start off with one population and by the end you only had 33. So does that mean your city only has 33,000 in the modern era? No, it scales like really weird, like kind of exponentially. But uh, thank you guys so much for that. Okay, so uh, let's, let's watch as something happens with Persia. I don't know what exactly. But we do have, a, we've had, the Huns are fighting on multiple fronts here. A lot of very mul multiple fronts. They, st they still have enough to make an offensive move against Persia as well as against Warsaw. Poland has lost most of their army, although they still have a lot of their naval units, which is good when attacking someone like Denmark. But besides that, I don't know. Still got to be careful. We, we really got to check on uh, influential. I'm so surprised Mongolia has been doing so good with the cultural victory. I'm really impressed. Yeah, Mongolia, or I'm sorry, the Huns are moving more and more south towards Persian territory. Uh, and they've they've retreated from Warsaw. Oh, they want to take this city back, and then they then they want to go back towards Warsaw. I think that's the case. Now, De oh, Sweden declared war in Denmark. So they're jumping in on that. All right, guys, looks like I'm going to have to stop right there, though. Thank you so much for watching. Woo! 
Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.